Welcome to Outlier On Air. Today we are in Ogden, Utah. We are at Tukio's with Curtis Funk. Thank you for having us at your place. Oh, thanks for being Appreciate here. Appreciate it. You're the founder of Tukio's. Yep. So, Tukio's, what does that name mean, first of all? I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, that's one of the first questions we always get asked. Um, so, Tukio, it means events in Swahili. Ah. So, we kind of just came up with a weird name because we market to funeral homes and everything else is so conservative and boring. Okay. Um, and we'd already been in the industry, so we were just looking for some way to really stand out. So we do the weird name. We have this grass thatch tiki hut we set up at, boot, at uh, trade shows. You're kidding. Our logo for spins funerals. around on top. Yeah, for funerals. Okay, so we're so in between like body hoists and embalming chemicals. Oh my it's goodness. This crazy so I can't not see bar. you. Yeah. So tell me what Tukio's does. Uh, we do slideshow videos for funerals. So if you ever go to a viewing or visitation or wake or even to a funeral service and they have like a slideshow video highlighting someone's life, photos of their life, video clips of maybe them you know, playing football or playing the piano or whatever, mm -hmm. they can add all those things. So what the, the purpose of it is, is just uh, a funeral director gets so many things thrown at them that they have to do at the time of death. And so, uh, and videos is one of those things. And it's like they would, a lot of them will spend hours and days making these videos. And they're not videographers, so they don't know what they're mm -hmm. doing. And so we made a way for them to be able to build one of these videos in about five minutes. So at first I thought that you were actually building the videos yourself. Or now it sounds to me like you have a technology product where the funeral director can build it. Is yeah. that right? Yep, yep. software as a service. Yeah, so okay. it's, it's all a web-based product, uh, which is really excellent because again, these guys are working, they work long hours, so they'll family, family will bring them a shoebox full of pictures um, yeah. and they'll start scanning these photos in at the funeral home and then it's like time to go home and have dinner with the family. So they'll get home and then with our system they can just log into their site and build the video, arrange the photos, do all the stuff, music, themes. If the person was a veteran, there's patriotic video clips. If they were a golfer, there's a you know golf theme. There's all these different thematic elements they can choose from. But they can work on it from anywhere, which is really great. And so it's simple for them to do, it's fast, all these things. So from our perspective, you know, we could do a couple hundred funerals in a day and, and be not really you know, take three or four support calls. There's not a lot for us that we're actually doing here during the day mm -hmm. in terms of day-to-day -day building videos. Instead, we're just making the product better, faster, more efficient, and adding to the library of yeah. themes and other things they can choose from. So it's pretty interesting that you went straight to the funeral director and not necessarily to the families and opened it up to the public. I assume it's not open to the public if it's a software as a service and this is, would be a one-time thing for families. Yeah, we have we have a couple people a week stumble across the website and build one for their, oh, okay. their they can't dad or something. Okay. But uh, the reason we market market to the funeral home is you, know, you market to the family. It's a one time thing. But where a single funeral home might do a thousand in a year. So, sure, you're tapping into a network yeah. of business. So uh, tell me how this business started. You mentioned before we sat down that this is your seventh location. Yeah. So you've been around a while. How many years? Uh, I think 12 now. Really? Yeah. So did you start out doing this no. exact service? How did it start? No. Uh, while I was in high school, my great-grandmother died. We went to a funeral home right here in Ogden, Myers Mortuary, mm -hmm. and they did a great job. They recorded the funeral service, and they gave us a cassette tape of that funeral. And so, you know, we kind of joked about it, like my family, like, you know, what are we going to do with a cassette tape? Who listens to cassettes anymore? <laughs> Where's that old Walkman? You know, and just and there was just, just like, we have no way of listening to this. Yeah, it was okay. just the audio. But one of my brothers spoke, and one of them sang a song, and so there was like, there was value in it. We mm -hmm. saw that. We we're like, well, you know, I'd probably listen to it again. Um, and so we thought, well, this is silly that they're on cassette tapes. So. Mm -hmm. My brother, I'm still in high school, like I said, so my brother started going to local funeral homes and he had all the expertise. He's a musician, has a recording studio. Hmm. And so he would go and, and tell these funeral homes, we can do this digitally. We can make it on CDs instead, you know, so that was the thing. So uh, he kind of started this thing, got it going. And then uh, sometimes I would skip out on class and go record a funeral. <laughs> Other times it'd be a Saturday and I'd be sitting in a church or in a funeral home setting up like a portable recording studio. And then I go back and edit it all, make the CDs, print them out, ship them back to the funeral home. Huh. And so that's kind of how it started. And then it just evolved to, you know, we don't want to go to the funeral anymore. So we provided them with the equipment 
trained them how to use it. They would record the service, send it to us through a website, which we got funeralrecording.com. Mm -hmm. So they started sending it to us. We'd edit it, send it back, ship them CDs, put it on the internet so you can listen to it on the internet. And that's so that's kind of that's how it started, anyways. It's just okay. Kind of a, so. All right, and maybe we can go into the progression of it in a minute, but one thing that keeps coming into my head is, you know, we talk to all these entrepreneurs and tech startups, and it's all about, you know, keeping the fire for what you're doing by choosing what you're passionate about. You know, and it's hard for me to say, wow, I could really imagine being passionate about funerals, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, that's like the first thing I think of, and not to be disrespectful at all, but how, is that truly your passion, or how, <laughs> Where did, where's that passion lie in this yeah. business? Yeah, definitely it's not like we're passionate about funerals in specifically. Um, and we, we have to really kind of remind ourselves sometimes, like, you know, at the end of the day, we're a tech company, we're a software as a service, and we don't really, we never see that funeral side of it because we're just in here in T-shirt and shorts and a lot of times with a hat on, right? So, yeah. like, we're just not in that world. And so really our passion is about, like, like making this product better and better and better and doing cool new things with technology, seeing what other guys have done. I mean, it's kind of, we have some uh, really powerful like software applications that we've built that it almost seems like, you know, like there would be better use for them in other industries, but we've, we've just kind of come to you know this, this industry. Yeah. So that's just kind of what's kept us here. Okay. So it sounds, well, as you mentioned, so you're really a tech company, but you started out um, really in the funeral industry before you were a tech company it was like maybe you already knew that industry and had the contacts and it developed into that as you yeah think. so have you created any other tech projects before this that didn't work yeah um, so with well with just to kind of give a little bit of background yeah, with sure. the funeral thing we evolved into live webcasts so if you couldn't go to the funeral you can now watch it live from your house and so we thought, well, webcasting, let's do all these cool things with and webcasting. when was that? That would have been in like 2008, 2007 or 2008. So, so we got, we now have this webcasting software that we thought was pretty cool. And so we started trying to go, and so next thing you know, we were going to different types of conventions. Mm -hmm. We went, we, we met with some multi-level marketing companies that were trying to broadcast their meetings to a large sure. group and heard some really funny things at those meetings. <laughs> and then, um, went to a Utah Leagues of Cities and Towns as another just local convention and started working with a couple of cities. And so they would broadcast their city council meetings. But the sales cycle is not only like long, but mm. just painful. They have to, has to go through city council, all these approval things. And we were used to like, you know, the funeral home, you had to talk to the guy and he owns the place, he writes the checks, he decides everything. Yeah. So you can, one cold call in 10 minutes can turn into a new client. And so like all of a sudden to change that where you're making 50 phone calls a day mm. and you're not making any sales for months, it was really hard. So we got into a couple cities and then just pulled the plug on that because it was just not, not going anywhere. You just went back to what you knew and what was working. Yeah. Um, are, do you feel like you want to stay in that industry for your whole career? Do you want to keep developing tech products? What do you want to do? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think like the dream is always, you know, as an entrepreneur, build something, grow it big, sell it, you know, and, and start something else. Mm -hmm. But it seems like we kind of reinvent ourselves every couple of years mm -hmm. here. And so at this point, like, I just, I mean, I don't even know. I mean, we yeah. still would, I mean, that sounds great to just grow it big and sell it still. But at the same time, we keep these other opportunities come up and we kind of pursue them. And, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, you kind of need to like, we're all really like, you know, open to risk. We're not afraid of risk. We'll risk everything for something really stupid and lose it all. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. Something new. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you got to be like, especially when we kind of grow the business and they get employees, they have families. It's, it's totally right. different now. Like how, you gotta, how many employees do you have? Right now there's 12 of us. Okay. And we've, we've were at some, at one point had over 20 and we were running wow. a little too heavy at that time. So what do those 12 people do? I mean, you're, I'm imagining the software as a service. Um, so you're not necessarily managing a lot of clients, a lot of customer service. I mean, where where does your uh, manpower go to mostly? Yeah, so I mean, there are a lot of clients, but that can be managed by just a couple people tech mm -hmm. support calls. So we've got okay. a couple people that answer phones, a couple that do finance, the smart guys that do the creative design and videography, and 
programming on the website. So and you then, still do videography? You yeah, still, okay. we're, we're filming and producing new themes for these slideshow videos. Okay, so, gotcha. And then um, we have a production department. So just to, again, to try to make things simple for the funeral home, if a family member wants a DVD of one of these slideshow videos, uh, we don't want to make the funeral home have to be, become a DVD replication shop. Right. So they can if they want, but if they don't, then the, the family can order directly from the website. Easy and we have a production team that will produce the DVDs. We have these little memorial keepsake boxes people can buy with all the photos in them. And when those are purchased, our production department here in this facility will box it all up, ship it. Right. That's what all these things are over here. I'm going to cut in here for just a second. Have you noticed on Outlier On Air, as I ask our entrepreneurs about their success, they almost always are dying to share a book title or two with you. That's because leaders are readers. You've heard that before. So take a look at the show notes of this interview at outliermagazine.co for a direct link to the books mentioned. If you're an audio lover like me, definitely check out our friends at Audible, where you can get any audiobook for free just by going to outlieraudiobooks.com. So go to outlieraudiobooks.com and get your audiobook for free. So you have a couple of other projects that you mentioned, and they're a little bit unrelated. Uh, let's see, you, you also record, okay, you, you'll say it better than I do, but you record resorts, right, yeah. with drones? Yeah. A completely different company or just as, like a side project? All the same, everything is two kios. Okay. But, so we have three different brands. So two kios is the brand for the slideshow product. Funeralrecording.com is the brand for audio recording and webcasting. Mm -hmm. And then Bragfire is our filming side. So okay. Bragfire is where we get out the drones and our, I'm, I'm not lucky enough to be a good videographer, mm -hmm. so I, I stay here, but the video videographers will, they've been to Jamaica and Mexico and Dominican Republic. They just got back from Orlando two wow. days ago, uh, Texas. That's so tough, done, that's a tough life. Yeah. So they've done 22 <laughs> resorts so far this year. And we, so we film these resorts, we take these drones, fly around, get some really cool mm -hmm. shots. Just, I mean, unbelievable shots. And resorts are so beautiful already. Yeah. Um, and so to kind of get that different bird's eye view of it is awesome. Sure. And then we build promotional videos for them. And uh, kind of the, the, I guess the uh, competitive advantage we have over other videography companies is, um, we have our bread and butter residual income from two kios and okay. so we're not looking for like ways to keep making money off of film and so we'll film a resort and produce produce their videos and everything color correct everything and then give them a hard drive with all of the footage on there and say have at it mm -hmm. where others will charge them a annual license fee uh, they'll charge them every time they want to use the footage for something new you want to put it on your Facebook page? Well, you got to pay X. You create all these barriers. Yeah, and, it, we, and we didn't really want to be policing that. And at the same time, like when we're out filming these resorts, we're collecting more footage and more assets that we can use for other projects. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a win-win for us. We give it to them at a great price and just no strings attached. That's kind of the, nice. what makes us different. So you've been in this business for several years. Have you had some major, major struggles where you thought you wouldn't be able to keep the doors open? Or has it just been smooth sailing? Hasn't been smooth sailing. I know better than to ask that, but give, <laughs> can you tell me about an example of that? Yeah, oh, I got. I mean, there's. I mean, payroll's always always fun, you know. I mean, especially like in those tight times where. Funny, I've heard that comment. Yeah. Yeah. Please. I don't think it's very uncommon for you know like an entrepreneur to be curled up on the floor in his living room the night before <laughs> payroll, thinking, "What's going to happen? What am I going to do?" Um, but uh, uh, probably one of our just biggest failures that was just so bad. Um, was when we first launched this funeral webcasting software. First of all, I went to a trade show. We didn't have it yet. So we were basically using Skype. And we had like set up over here, this is how you do a broadcast, and this mm -hmm. is how the family watches it at home. And so you were simulating it via Skype? Or yeah, basically. You were well, still developing We didn't the have a product, product yet. Oh, you didn't have it We yet. didn't even start development on it yet. Oh, okay. We went and sold it before we'd even started work. So we just thought, let's see if people will pay for this. Yeah, like, and people absolutely. will give us their business cards. We got a stack of business cards. We're like, this is awesome. Yeah. Like, we're going to kill it. And that's not the right thing to say in this industry. But so anyways, <laughs> we, but we, uh, we go oh, home. Oh. We start calling through these business cards. And like, 
everybody's excited about it. I'm like, okay, let's do this, but we didn't have a product yet. So mm -hmm. like, and then we started working on that anyways. Like, long story short, we finally built this webcasting product, and we hadn't really tested it very well. And our first client goes live, and they're all excited about this. Mm -hmm. And so they called everybody. And this is this little funeral home out in the middle of Ohio. So they called the newspapers, they called the news, really? like everybody. Come in here, we're gonna film this. You know, we want this total big time media coverage. Everybody in town's at this funeral. I'm in college still at the time, so I'm sitting in class, and I know there's about to be like this webcast about to happen. This funeral's about to start, so I'm pretty nervous. And at the time, the business was me and a friend, and so uh, the phone number on our website just hit my cell phone, you know, like there's, and we had this little teeny office, and so I'm sitting in class, and all of a sudden the phone rings, and I'm, I mean, I knew it was gonna ring. I knew there's no possible right. way this thing's gonna work. <laughs> and so, yeah, of course, like, it's them, they've called, they're like, this funeral is going, it's been going for 10 minutes, everybody's freaking out, family's all calling us, this webcast isn't working, oh the screen God. is just black. Luckily, I was in a computer class, so I could like at least pull up and see, yeah, this thing's broken. And we didn't have a full-time programmer at the time, it was just like this contract guy we were working with. So now I'm trying to get a hold of him, and he's not answering, so I'm calling, it's like cousins, and like anybody I could that would know like, how do I get a hold of him? So, I mean, I made this like huge circle through like six people. I finally found his wife's cell phone number. It was so terrible, but um, <laughs> got a hold of him. This thing's not working. By this time, like the service is an hour into it. We've totally botched it up. And it was because the guy's name was Robert Bob, and they put his name Bob in quotations. And just those quotations, we had to test that on a name. So putting quotations broke the whole system. Oh, so yeah, the whole webcast was down. Oh, that's a and bummer. So, <laughs> I don't think we recovered it at all. I think just the whole somehow they, I, I don't. They still today are a paying client. They really? Don't know how we recovered oh, that's it. Interesting. So, so what did you? I mean, what did? How did that affect how you were building your business from there after? Well, I would say we tested things a lot more, but I don't think we still. I still don't think we. <laughs> Test things very well. It's just too, you too, get too excited about a new feature. You just want to release yeah. it. So it's like, get it out there. Let's tell everybody. Blog, you know, like all this stuff. And so we, we're still just not great at testing. But now it's it's a whole lot different. Like there, it was like we can have a system that's rickety, and there's only going to be one funeral happening a week. So it's like no big deal. But if something goes down today, it's like a it's a big deal. We're kind of two kilos at this point. Is uh, we're kind of the tribute video. That's what they're called. Mm -hmm. These slideshow videos, mm -hmm. tribute videos. We're like the tribute video. Player, at least one of the top three you know so people know us and they know that's all we really focus on we do it better than everybody else so we're kind of at the point now where we we're like I say we're still not great at testing but we don't we don't just rush things out as fast as we used to so how can you um, what can what can our entrepreneurial audience learn from from that experience and from how you built your business today you have this team it's not it's not very small but it's not huge you've got every person in a certain seat uh, for a certain purpose what can we learn from how you built your team and recovered from that and actually made them a paying client yeah um, so I learned about this concept right before I went and had that whole major mess um, called cell design build and we've really like just lived by that. So like you sell something before you design it, before you build it. Which you, you did, make sure, that was yeah, the right thing we did to do. It. I mean, out of those hundred business cards, I think we got three of them to actually start <laughs> going because it took us so long, they just went other directions. Mm -hmm. But um, we've always kind of done that. We'll tell, you know, kind of go out and sell some new thing we're doing mm -hmm. before we actually build it. And it, it's really helped because it's like, you know, if we go out and put a lot of effort into selling something and we can't sell it, even if it, you know, if we're not good enough sales guys to fake it enough to make a sale that yeah. doesn't, you know, of a product that doesn't quite exist yet, uh, it's not going to change much when it's actually here. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, that's a very valuable um, concept yeah. that we've lived by. It sounds like, okay, even if that client were not still a paying client, it sounds like um, having sold the product first just showed that there was a need for that in the industry. So you obviously have the potential for a client base there. Whereas I think a lot of people that are starting these tech projects are starting them as a labor of love and maybe not necessarily testing and finding out if it's actually needed. So I think that's a, a great point to sell it first. Yeah, a lot of guys too, they'll start building something and you 
you're like, well, it's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. Because it's it's, this is your baby, right? Yeah. And you want it to be like so perfect before you tell anybody about it or sell it to anybody. And um, so I think trying just kind of getting over that. Yeah. Because otherwise, you can. I mean, I, I know guys who have spent two and three years in development, and then they. Yeah. By the time you release it, somebody you're else out of is money. already. Yeah, you're out of money. <laughs> right. You had nothing left to market or sell, yeah. and the other guys released it already, so you're kind of behind. So yeah, we're. Yeah, that's. Think really valuable yeah. to just get over that fear. So help us uh, learn about your revenue structure and how you've come along. Is you mentioned that sometimes it's been difficult to meet payroll. Where are you at now? Um, well, I think we're, we're a lot more comfortable now, like in terms of. Can you tell us what what your company grosses or? Well, we kind of keep that quiet okay. just for right. <laughs> our competitors. Oh yeah, okay. And stuff, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's we're in a much better position now where, like, it's the payroll stuff's not, you know, like this big scary thing anymore. Um, and at one point, we, we'd raised money before, we've done business loans, we've done all kind of, kinds of different things for, for funding and, uh, you know, kind of go from like being the red to the black and the red mm -hmm. to the black and like this roller coaster of sure. finances. And, um, but we've maintained this like the, the company itself, we've grown month over month over month now for about 42 months straight where we're just, it's just every month is bigger. And in the funeral industry, that's kind of tough because less people die in the summer, which is weird. But mm, more I people die in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> so like talking to other people in the industry for us to, to maintain that growth during the summer has always been, people are surprised to hear that because mm -hmm. it's like, wow, how are you, you know, because we're basically growing over a 30% dip. How are you doing that? I think it's just the product and it's really our clients. Like our clients get so excited about how easy it is they tell their friends. Like I wrote, I wrote uh, a quote down this morning. This guy was on. Like this guy called in. I answered the phone. He'd used this for the first time, and he just kept saying, "Like, there's no way it's this easy. There's no way it's this easy." You know, and I'm like, so I'm like writing down, "There's no way this easy. There, it's this easy." And I still need to ask him if I can throw that up on our website. But yeah, put that I mean, on a mug or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's really kind of it. We've got these clients that'll just tell their friends, like Iowa, for some reason, like. I don't know what our percentage of the market in Iowa is, but it's pretty much the whole state. So there's money to be had in these little niche areas, you know, that, I mean, right? There's, there's yeah. money to sustain at least 12 families in you. Yeah. And is there a lot more potential than that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're just right now just focusing on the United States. We have, we have customers in other countries, in Canada, England, New Zealand, Australia. Uh, but there's there's a whole world, you know, like that yeah. we can still go after. We're just trying to make sure we're like we're absolutely the number one player here before we yeah. put too much effort into those other countries. So. That's a good point. So you're being careful about how you scale. Yeah, the so, market in the United States is about 35 million, like tribute videos for funerals. Hmm. That's the size of the, just the U.S. market. And so. you have what percentage of that market share? I have you know? no idea. I, we had a, there was a R and D company that or like market research company that did these yeah. calls and they think we have seven percent but i'm okay i'm not sure okay so so what are you doing now to remain competitive to get that number higher and higher i mean there obviously there are others that are doing this yeah at this point we're, we're making a lot of changes where we can kind of like drink our own kool-aid like we're trying to get this get the product to a point where obviously we're not we can't make funeral videos every day i've only made one for real, because my really? grandpa passed away, mm -hmm. um, but we're building our system where you can we can make videos outside of just that mm -hmm. one funeral industry, so we can get more familiar with the product and realize what sucks about it. Really, um, when I made my grandpa's video, it was about seven or eight months ago, mm -hmm. and you know I put all this time into it, wanted it to be perfect, and then I came out of there with like all kinds of ideas for how to make the product better. At the end of the day, that's that's how we maintain like how we're better than our competitors. It's just like put yourself in the client's shoes, and what's annoying about the product? Well, if it you know if it did this or if that part was cheaper or this didn't cost anything or we gave them this for free or yeah. there's all these different things we look at and try to think like what is in the best interest of the user. And the more and more we do that, it's just we just see the sales just keep kind of growing on their own. Mm. So if we've got some entrepreneurs in our audience, obviously we have entrepreneurs in our audience who are just starting out, and especially in the tech field, they're grabbing a niche and they're running with a product. What advice do you have for them? 
to not try and control things that they're just going to make you more money because at the end of the day they lose money for you. We have we have something I really can't stand about our product uh, that is uh, when a client needs to edit something, mm -hmm. there's a little edit fee. I don't even know why that's there. It's 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 stupid. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like producing this seems like a decent amount of revenue because there, there's lots of edits that happen every day. It's like well that we're you know if we turn that off, we're just throwing away all this money. But at the end of the day, it's like, we might be losing clients because of that, because it's so mm -hmm. annoying and so stupid. So, I've, you know, I've seen that at a lot of our competitors, especially. They have all these things that they're doing to try to lock down the user so the user acts just the way you want them to act so you can make more money at the end of the right. day. But then it makes it really easy for guys like us to come and take that client away. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, well, you know, we're better than them for this reason, but we also don't do all these stupid things. Right. So you're saying the edit fee is something that your competitor does? No, that's something that we do? still do. Like, we just haven't turned it off. We'll cut it out. I know. We'll, we'll do it right now. <laughs> that's a good point. No, that's a great point. But, I love how you use yourself as an example. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's something that I would say is just don't, don't try to make the user someone they're not, you know? So I hear great things about you in the startup community here around Ogden, so you're obviously doing wonderful things to give back and help other founders, and so we appreciate that. Where can we find you online and learn more about you? Uh, my name is Curtis Funk. It's kind of, <laughs> I, I think there's two Curtis Funks in the world, so. Really? And I'm the only one that does anything with the internet, for so sure. if you search my name, it's pretty easy. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. It's There's one other woman to game in, and she's just getting started in the end. Yeah. So I've already got all the names. So yeah, me too. Curtis Funk or whatever is, is me. So you're on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, Twitter, Great. Facebook, LinkedIn. And your websites? Um, Tukios.com, Bragfire.com, and FuneralRecording.com. Okay, awesome. Well, we're going to take a minute after this to look around your office, meet your crew, and... So go to outliermagazine.co and you can see the bonus video to see what Tukio's looks like and what they're doing. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.